Manchester Village. Good morning. This is Congressman Ralph Norman. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to call in. The purpose of this call is for the small businesses to call in, and we've got a panel of people that I want to introduce briefly. Uh, Joe Hartz uh, and Robert Yavor, they're the United States House of Representatives Small Business Committee. Uh, we'll have Mark Hendrick and J.B. Super from the South Carolina Department of Employment and Workforce, and we'll have Greg White, who is the uh, South Carolina District Director for the SBA. This this dial-in will last one hour sharp. That's the allotted time. I want to jump into questions, and I think the, uh, Sarah, the moderator, has given you the cue to on what to dial in. But our purpose today is to ask as many questions to shed some light on issues and problems that you're having. So um, we'll jump right into it. Uh, and let me remind you, keep, please keep your questions brief and to the point, and we'll want to get through for the next hour as many as we can. Let me start off with the first question that I'm hearing uh, every day. Uh, I've, I'm a small business. I've gone to my bank. Uh, they are not uh, saying they're not participating, and those that have gone to banks have been held up. So let me uh, kick this to you, Mark or Jamie, if y'all could briefly address this issue that I know I've been hearing about. Yes, sir. Um, good afternoon, and truly thank you for this opportunity. Um, when we we want to we want to say that um, a lot of questions and inquiries are associated with unemployment right now. Um, again, we're truly receiving updated guidance on a daily basis in regards to some of these new federal programs as USDOL provides additional guidance. Right now, if you're a small business and you're looking for what opportunities may be available to you and you've been declined or denied for a loan, we do say that, you know, unemployment, you know, again, with the pandemic unemployment assistance program, there may be opportunities. But right now, what we're asking individuals is to file a claim. Go ahead and file for unemployment insurance. We do the best we can to get through those claims, through that claim process, and then determine what other programs you may potentially become eligible for as additional guidance is provided to us. Mark, you may want to add anything additional associated with what you may have heard. Okay. Um, thank you. Well, let's, uh, let's open it up for uh, operator, open the lines up for questions, and let's start uh, hearing from our audience. Our first question, Clayton Miles, your line is open. Uh, good morning. I would like to know why you can only apply to one bank for the PPP, and then they cannot give you any answers on where your loan application is, what process, or even when you will really be submitted to the SBA. Great question. Okay, who wants to take this one, Joe or Robert or Jamie? Uh, I, I think um, if, if Mr. If I think uh, this, this falls under his domain more than it does uh, Congress's in terms of communicating with folks at this point. Okay, Kathy Rose. Is Mr. White, is, is Mr. White is Mr. White on the line or no? I don't think he's joined us yet. Okay. Um, sure, I'll, I'll I'll take a stab at it. Um, this is this is a work in progress, ma'am. Um, the there's it, it, there's a, there's a lot going on, um, and it's I, we recognize that it's difficult. Um, the SBA is, is, was not necessarily set up to handle this level of uh, of, of activity all at once. Um, the the best I can say at the moment right now is. Um, it's better today than it was yesterday, and it's going to be better tomorrow than it was today. Um, the, the, the banks are doing the best they can to get uh, moving with the, the guidance that, that SBA and Treasury is sending out. Um, we recognize that it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for everybody, um, but the, everybody uh, is, is doing the best that they can to try and get the, these loans out the door as quickly as possible. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. But that doesn't really answer my question. 
No, ma'am. What what I would say is just keep uh, keep doing what you just keep going back to the bank and any if you're still not getting any any answer. Uh, remember this: go to repralph.norman at mail.house.gov. Repralph.norman at mail.house.gov. Get me the name of the bank and get me who you're talking to. And let us take a stab at it. Kathy Rose is on the line. So Kathy Rose, you want to add anything to this? Um, no, they they are more than welcome to call us or contact us through your um, Facebook page. Or actually, um, I'm going to give you the business cell phone. It is 803-833-0000. I have been just going down the list um, and calling people back and talking to them. Um, if I can add in this, and uh, Joe and Rob might want to talk to this also, is that he could not have said it any better that FBA was not set up to handle the number of loan requests and the banks here again were not anywhere near set up. Everyone is working as fast and as hard as they can to get these uh, rules and regs for lending this money in place to make sure that the banks are covered and not as exposed as they don't. They obviously don't want to be exposed, Ms. Miles. You can appreciate that, and they want to adhere to the SBA guidelines as well as to look good with the Federal Reserve. And it's, so it's a very complicated um, picture. So we, we, everyone is working as hard as they can, as fast as they can to get this money out the door. Yeah, and I don't mean to be critical. The bank, everybody that I've talked to at SBA has been wonderful and bends over backwards. They don't have any better idea than I do, and none of us calls this. I just don't understand why if one bank you have applied with says they are having a real hard trouble tracking your application and other people that applied at the same time you did have had response, others haven't, why we're not allowed to try another bank. I love my bank, but they're not able to do right now what I need to have done and I don't know, I don't want to break the law, so I don't want to go to another lender when I'm not supposed to, but I don't know why I shouldn't be able to. And, and Ms. Miles, again, um, did you happen to have a chance to write down my number? And I will be more I than did. glad to talk to you. I, Perfect. I did. Give and me a, thank okay. Y'all have been, me, y'all have been wonderful, sure. too. Thank you. Much. Mm-hmm. Operator Take next. Care. Operator next Congressman, time. this is Greg White. I just got online. I was on the other line, could not speak. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to make a few comments. Sure. Thank you, Greg. Greg is the SBA South Carolina Director for the Small Business Association. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, we're, we are having um, the same issues here with our different lenders. Some of them are not getting up to speed as quick. Um, I would encourage the, the young lady to apply for both the EIDL loan, the Economic Injury Loan, and the Paycheck Protection Plan because they can run hand-in-hand. So if she's not getting funded through the Payroll Protection Plan, that she could uh, get some money from the EIDL loan. Uh, We are uh, finding that lenders are uh, limiting their applications from time to time, but we do have the website where you can go and look for another lender and understand the problems with only applying at one application at one lender at a time. Don't have an answer for that, so Congressman, we really would appreciate your input into that. Uh, but uh, I'm back on line now, and I'll be glad to answer any questions that come up also. Great. We had a conference with the banks, and they're just what you said, Greg and Kathy Rose. They're, it's like pushing a fire hydrant uh, through a two-inch pipe or an inch pipe, and it's just taking time. They're having to, rem- to work remotely, so it's just getting up to speed. I think they will. But uh, I think the expectations of that to get a check pretty immediately was is, is not happening. But I think it will happen as long as the money holds out. But thank you, Greg. Uh, operator, next question. Our next question, Elizabeth Clater, your line is open. Elizabeth? 
Yeah, it, yes, this is Elizabeth. I, I was trying to find out. I'm new to this. I, I, I just don't know what to do. I haven't uh, placed my application yet. I filled it out online, but I haven't, I haven't sent it yet. And what I wanted to know is, is there a requirement um, for the funds, or is there something that will keep you from getting the funds? If you have a small business, Greg, you want to have, you want to take that? Yeah, which which loan are you are you talking about? The economic injury loan or the paycheck protection plan, ma'am? Do you I'm, have a? I'm talking about the economic injury loan. Yes, ma'am. On the application process, if you go on to the website, it has a uh, several questions you answer, uh, and those answers will determine whether you're eligible or not. Typically, you're not going to be kicked out unless you've had some um, previous history, criminal history, or you're not an eligible borrower, such as a uh, an agriculture producer for that program is not eligible. So it, it is a self-certifying application. If you just check the boxes, go through that application, it will determine whether you're eligible or not. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Operator, next question. Operator, next question. Thank you. Our next question from Tammy. Your line is open. Tammy. Uh, Tammy, do you do you hear? Okay. Next question. Yes. Oh, is that Tammy? Yes. Okay. Um, with the um the loans that you are getting from the bank in. I know it ha is based on payroll, and uh, so how how do they determine how much you would get? And is the owner of the business also included in that payroll, or is it just for employees? Great question. Greg, you want to tackle that? Yes, sir. Uh, the yes, the owner is included in the payroll. You should be paying yourself a salary as you go through, and the maximum loan you can get for that program is $10 million. You cannot use any more than 25% uh, of the loan for other purposes other than payroll, reimbursement, and eligible cost under the program. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it, and it's, uh, you know, it's based upon your payroll. They're going to be go look at the payroll uh, documentation you have that you've got to pay back, uh, and then that money will be reimbursed back to the bank to pay down the loan at a period of time after June 30th. Okay. All right. And Greg, what what year? What the payroll based on what year? It's the <laughs> you pre you base it on the previous year for the application, but you're only going to be in reimbursed for the amount that was incurred during the period between February the 15th and June the 30th. Right. Okay. 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 Next question, operator. Operator, next question. Thank you. Our next question, John Thomas, your line is open. Yes, thank you, Congressman, for having this call. Um, I wanted to know, um, uh, and it's involving the um, employee retention credit eligibility. For example, if, if, if I, I have applied for the PPP loan, but if I don't get the loan, um, it says that, to be eligible, you have to have more than 50% decrease in your gross receipts, and that's a ton. Um, I was wanting to know if Congress might be thinking about going back and looking at that and maybe moving it to 30% or 35%. Not at this time. I think we're all looking at it again. We'll be looking at it because uh, to address a lot of things, the affili affiliation rules where you've got different owners with different LLCs and companies, and then um, you've got just a host of other issues that they're facing. But we should be going back in another week to address probably that, uh, your question. But right now it's not on the agenda with the money that has been allocated. Greg or any of the others, Joe or Robert, have any input on that? Sure. Uh, actually, uh, Rob, I think you, you've answered the a similar question like this. Rob, you there? 
Okay. He must have gotten I, off. I, yeah. We, we, yeah. We, we, we lost Rob. Um, yeah. It, uh, it, Mr. Norman is correct. Um, the, 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 we're going to have to open this back up, um, uh, and we're going to have to do it uh, sooner rather than later. Um, and early estimates is that the money, uh, the $350 billion already allocated, uh, could run out uh, as early as uh, the end of next week. So we're going to need uh, we're going to need to, to, to refund it, and that may present an opportunity for Congress to, to make changes such as the ones that, that you would need. Oh, this is Robin. I, I'm sorry, I was, I was it was going in and out. I don't think uh, folks could hear me. Um, yeah, just to, I know we've kind of talked about the background and kind of where the money is, but um, it may be helpful just to kind of lay out uh, the original goals of the program and kind of where we are today. So from the beginning, um, it was to save and uh, provide assistance to as many small businesses as possible during the emergency period. And I'm specifically talking about the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, that legislation, which was drafted on the Senate side, um, with our assistance, um, we, we were putting that together over, you know, three to four weeks ago. Um, uh, unfortunately, the emergency period continues to grow almost on a uh, hourly, daily basis. So as, as Joe and as Congressman Norman have suggested, you know, uh, we will probably be returning uh, to see if we could um, match where the emergency period is right now. And uh, folks are trying to uh, make the best decisions right now based on the info that we have. It is growing um it is expanding so we're trying to match that as best that we can great let me add this to the be sure and get your application in uh, rob's exactly right the money is going to run out and if you have any trouble with your application i'm going to repeat this number that kathy rose did to call in 803-833-0544 call that number if, if any of our listeners have trouble or have questions with the application okay operator next next caller our next question from Cheryl McManus. Your line is open. Thank you. I actually have two questions, if I could. One is an unemployment question, and one is a loan question. Uh, under the unemployment, if you go on the DU website, it doesn't give a self-employed person the option of even applying for unemployment. And I want an update on that, please. This okay. is... Um this is Jamie Suber. I'll, I'll take that one, Congressman. Um, yes, we understand. Um, initially, for the self-employed, we're asking you to file a standard unemployment insurance claim. That is the first step in the process. Um, you may be denied for eligibility due to the fact that unemployment is something that's not normally available to those individuals. However, we did receive additional guidance over the weekend associated with uh, pandemic unemployment assistance. We're now working to configure our systems as we speak to be able to give additional instructions in regards to what that claim filing experience is going to be. So right now we ask those to go ahead and file for unemployment and then we'll probably be reaching out to you for additional information to explain how that PUA program is going to actually work. So we just received guidance on Sunday. We're working with our vendor very closely to make those changes to modify our system to be able to accept those applications for the self-employed. Okay, thank you. And I also have a long question. Uh, I banked with the credit union, and I tried for a PPP loan yesterday. They're not taking those loan applications. I have personal accounts with two other banks. They're only taking business uh, customers right now. What would I do in that situation? I've applied for an EIDL loan. I did that a week ago yesterday and have not heard anything from that. Greg? Yes, sir. The uh, the payroll protection plan, we have a uh, website. If you go to our website, uh, so the lenders list that you can review for other lenders that are participating in it. Uh, you right. can contact any, any, any of those that you would like to. There are several other credit unions, one of them being uh, Palmetto Citizens and South Carolina Federal State Credit Union. Both of those are participating. Um, as far as the uh, EIDL loan, um, you, ha you haven't heard from. They are running behind on following up a loan. If you applied before March the 27th, they've asked you to go back in and reapply under the new simplified system because that includes the potential $10,000 uh, advancement 
or grant to a business uh, based upon certain criteria. Uh, but the you keep calling, and you can call the customer service line now. They have a lot more uh, employees on basis with ability to check your status on the loan application for the EID loan also. Great. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Operator, next next question. <clears throat> next question, Dr. Craig Character, your line is open. Yes, this is um, his wife. He had to go see an emergency. He's a dentist. Um, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Um, my question is kind of the same that she just stated. Um, we are with First Piedmont Federal here in Gaffney, and that's where our business account is, and they will not do the PPP loan. Um, so we have our personal with Bank of America. They won't do it because we don't have a business account. We called six other banks yesterday, and they also will not accept that application because we don't have a business account there. Greg? You know, it is a, a, a continuous issue that we have. Um, if you want to talk to your lender and see if you can convince them in some way to participate, we would be glad to sign them up and get them involved in the program. It's going to simplify and be more simple for, simpler the, the more we move forward with this. Um, uh, otherwise, really all you can do is look at our lender list and this online and See if you can't find a lender that's willing to participate. Um, this is an ongoing issue and something that hopefully will be addressed in the future. Okay. I guess we'll just uh, – well, we kind of went through the lender list yesterday and called each one and didn't have any luck. So hopefully they – First Piedmont Federal said they may be able to do it, but they're not online yet. Well, if they need help getting online, have them call me or call our office, and we will help them and assist them get, getting online and getting information and getting them certified. Okay. Can you give me your number, please, to call? Um, it's 803-765-5377, and any of my staff will be able to help with that. All right. Let me give you one other number, our number, because we'll be glad. To, this is an evolving process. Uh, it's uh, it's just it's taking time, but call our office because things are changing. Eight zero three eight three three zero five four four. Eight zero three eight three three zero five four four, and we'll, we'll be glad to get involved uh, and, and see what we can do. Operator, next question. Chuck Connell, your line is open. Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you, Cong Congressman, for having this conference call. Uh, my question is for DEW. I have been told that employees who are going through a reduction in wages because of the virus uh, are eligible to file for some kind of uh, unemployment, even though they are still employed, but they've had their hours cut. Is that true? So you're speaking in regards to, this is Jamie again with Employment and Workforce. So you're yes, saying individual whose hours have been reduced? Correct. Yes, sir. So, yes, they they could potentially be eligible if they file a claim to go through the unemployment process. They, you know, most likely may be eligible for benefits if their wages, their hours have been reduced. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Do you, um, do you want to contact me directly for additional information associated how to get that process going? or you want to yeah, direct absolutely. your employees directly to the website, um, I'm more than willing to assist you. Yes, sir, Mr. Cooper. If I can get your, your phone, your contact information, I'd love to. Okay. Um, I can be reached at 803? Yes, sir. 737-2552. And I can be reached at jsuber, S-U-B-E-R, at D-E-W dot S-C dot gov. All right. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Right. Great. Thank you. Uh, operator, next question. Lydia Williams, your line is open. Um, yes. I had an, a question about unemployment, too. I um, am a salon owner, and I work by myself, and I applied for unemployment and was denied. Um, as a self-employed employee, so I didn't know. Um, I think my question was sort of answered before, but um, I'm just not sure what to do next since 
uh, my unemployment was denied, but I have been closed by order okay. of the governor. All right, this is Jamie again, and and that's that's correct. And I appreciate you going ahead and filing that regular UI claim. And due to the fact that you are, you know, independent, self-owned, and you are, you know, you have not paid into the unemployment system, that's why that unemployment insurance claim was denied. However, again, like we spoke earlier, we have received additional guidance in regards to what pandemic unemployment assistance and what this PUA program is going to be. Again, we're working to modify our system, and then as soon as we implement that PUA program, we're going to be able to reach out to you and give you additional instruction and in how that eligibility in that program is going to work. When, when, the, when the bill passed, the intentions were for those individuals to be held eligible for unemployment, but we didn't know what the special program was going to be or the rules associated with it. So we have received that additional guidance, and we're working to implement those changes so you could, could potentially be eligible for that PUA program. So, uh, again, I, I ask for your patience. We're doing as much as we can to uh, work very closely with our vendor to make those modifications so we can have those individuals and you specifically become eligible for PUA. Okay. Ms. Williams. Can somebody did, tell me if there's any other, um, like, I don't understand about the uh, small business loan um, that y'all are talking about. What type of uh, small business loans would there be for somebody that's an independent owner such as myself? Great question. Greg, you want to tackle that? Yes, sir. Uh, you could apply for the economic injury and disaster loan. We call it the idle loan. Uh, it's available for you to apply for right now. You can go online to uh, www.sba.gov and backslash disaster. It's electronic application online. Since you are a sole proprietorship, you could apply for that. You could also apply for the um, payroll protection, uh, paycheck protection plan. Uh, you would have to wait until after April the 10th. Um, I would not recommend that one specifically for you because it really deals with more with employees, but you would actually be able to apply for that and get your loan um, uh, deferred or uh, reimbursed to the bank if you agree to do that. But I think for you, the idle loan would be much more uh, attractive. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. And for answering my questions, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Greg, would you repeat your n telephone number again so people can call in to the SBA? Yes, 803-765-5377. And the website again? www.sba.gov. Great. Thank you. Operator, next question. Tyron, Greg Bird, your line is open. Thank you. Um, is there a minimum amount of time that a, a business has to have been started before they can apply for the loan, whether it's several months or a year or so? Greg, you want to take that? Yes. You have to be in the, have, have been in business prior to January the 1st, 2020. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Drakeford. Operator, next question. Casey Wheeland, your line is open. Uh, thank you, Congressman, for having this uh, town hall. This is excellent. Hey, I got a couple questions. Uh, one in particular is in reference to the cash flow issue. What programs do you have that are affecting the companies that, you know, are getting impacted by the people that aren't paying us? And it's significantly impacting our cash flow. We've cut back personnel to address some of that, you know, the reduction in business, but that's that's kind of my question. I mean, what's out there for cash flow to protect us from our cash flow just during the short term time we can get businesses back rolling again? Sure, great question, Greg. You want to go through the list again? Yes, the economic injury and disaster loan is available to you. It's a loss of revenue uh, filler. Typically, in in previous disasters, it was to cover loss of revenue, such as when you had a tornado to hit and close down businesses and they couldn't get revenue, so, and they could get a loan for 30 years up to, in this case, $2 million uh, at 3.75% interest rate to cover you through and carry you through the period that you estimate possibly, I would estimate six months down the road, your loss of revenue until you can get it caught back up. 
So that one's available to you. The Paycheck Protection Plan has some got regards to that, but right now it's a two-year, one um, percent uh, rate um, that you'd have to pay back, and only 25 percent of the uh, the application can go toward that source. The rest of it has to go toward um, the payroll protection portion of it, which is um, benefits and payroll act uh, expenses. So either one of them you can apply for, but for your loss revenue, the EIDL up to $2 million is probably your best bet. Very right. well. The, the follow-up question, is there a portal, or do we have to do all the, the submittals to directly to our bank? The EIDL is a direct loan from SBA. It's an electronic application with direct funding through SBA, and you can go to our website, and it's electronic application, electronic certification, Fairly simple, and uh, it's an easy process. Okay, thank you so much. And if you have any trouble, uh, sir, again, call our number, 803-833-0544, and we, got, we have people that can, can uh, hopefully answer any question. Operator, yes, next, sir, we next, really appreciate your help on this. Yes, sir, my, my pleasure. Operator, next question. Shane Denton, your line is open. Yes, I had a few questions. Uh, first one I'll start on with is, a, um, is involving the PPP uh, loan uh, in the utility. So basically, you got your uh, your, your uh, pay, paycheck protection, uh, and then you basically have utilities, rent, mortgage, whatever they got. Uh, in addition to that, uh, what all is included in utilities is um, you know we have uh, vehicle insurance, we have you know um, the uh, uh, a few vehicle loans uh, for, for some of our uh, service vehicles. Uh, what all is included in the utilities uh, category? Right. Utilities is typically your um, uh, electric and gas, water and sewer, uh, possibly Internet connections. It would not include any other aspect of that, but you do have some other expenses such as debt service uh, that can be reimbursed also for uh, mortgage payments and lease payments and rents. Um, that would be eligible also under that program. So basically, should we submit what we have and let the bank decide what they're going to on their end? I mean, too much yes, information, I, yeah. is, I think, is always better than not enough on, on that, correct? That is correct. And I would submit what you would uh, apply for as far as the expenses the bank and yourself would have to certify to the, the accuracy of that documentation. But, yes, sir, that would be my guess. Okay, and one other question. Um, uh, <clears throat> I know a lot of uh, businesses that have shut down so far have basically been non-essential businesses, the salons, the, the clothing stores, such things as that. Uh, we're actually a electrical and heating and air business, and um, right now we're still able to uh, perform most of what we typically would do. Um, however, I, a lot of the work we're doing right now is on new construction, and I kind of feel like we're going to end up in a snowball effect. Right now, I don't. Um, we're, we're not getting hurt too bad, but I think you know a month down the road is probably when our businesses will fill it because um, basically a lot of the new construction will slow down to some degree. People holding back a little bit, I think, uh, not knowing what's going to happen, uh, what's going on. Uh, so. Um, do they take into account uh, whether you're an essential business or not in this PPP loan or the EID loan? Um, I, I, I wasn't sure if, you know, they looked at that yet. Because right now we're still currently able to work our employees, but, you know, several weeks, months from now we may not be able to. The um, advice I've been giving to my son who's in the same boat you are, he's a contractor and has extension is – to look down the road six months and see what you estimate your lost revenue is going to be because of lost contracts that you may have had in the future that you know you're not going to get it because you're probably seeing some contracts canceled right now. So I would I advise him to go in and apply for the EID loan and get it. He doesn't have to take it. Uh, he doesn't have to take all of it. He can decide it, whether he wants to reduce the loan amount or that's, pro that's requested or that's suggested by the uh, loan officer. Um, so that would be my suggestion. Yeah, go ahead and apply. Uh, there's not any specific um, exemption for essential businesses, uh, whether you're essential or whether you're not. You can apply for either one of these loans. Okay. All right. That sounds good. And uh, I believe that was all I had. Great. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Operator, next question. 
Next question from Connie. Your line is open. Yes, good morning. Um, I had a question regarding the EIDL loan. You had made mention about if you applied before a certain date, and I just actually have an update. My husband was on the phone with uh, SBA uh, Fed just a minute ago regarding that concern. We had uploaded our application on March 24th. On March 27th, we did get a notification that it was in review. We did, we did call frequently, and they did tell us we did not have to reapply, um, so we got kind of scared. Um, we did apply for the PPP. We're having a lot of success with Bank of America because we do do our business there. Just as a point of information, uh, my husband just got off the phone with, with them, and they indicated since our PPP is in process, we do not have to reapply for the EIDL loan because that will that'll go coincide with that. We did do two separate um, applications. I don't know if that helps anybody or not. No, thank you. Thank you for hanging in there with it, too. Operator, this is Greg White. I, I, yeah, I'm glad you did. That's uh, that's good information for us. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your help. Operator, next question. Next question from Lynn. Your line is open. I have two questions. One is the eight week time frame on the loan. Um, does it matter when we receive a bill as long as we pay it in the eight weeks time period, like the rent and utilities, or is it more important that we receive the bill during the eight-week period and it doesn't matter when it gets paid, if it gets paid in 10 weeks or it, or does it have to be paid in that eight weeks period? Greg? Uh, the lender has to document that it's an eligible cost along with yourself and it's supposed to be the monies that were spent during that period of time. Uh, so you could have been billed and paid in the same period of time, but I would not think that you would be able to uh, have expenses going past that uh, eight-week period and include that in it or have expenses that were incurred prior to that and going forward. But uh, yeah, the best thing to do is put it in the application, see if it comes back okay, and then go from, that, go from there. Okay. I also have another question on unemployment. Um, we laid off a tremendous number of people, and if we need just a few of them randomly for two days a week because we actually got work, how does that work? Um, when I look at the unemployment um, portals, all of the claimants that I responded to as the employer, I can't view them any longer. Okay. So Thank how, you. how would I report those hours? Um, um, there's a two-part process in the employer file claims process. Obviously, you as the employer file in on their behalf. However, each employer is responsible for certifying each week in which they continue to draw for or file for unemployment. When they go to certify they, that, that week, they would be responsible for in, in, entering those earnings. So it's, it's, it would be their responsibility for entering those earnings if you call them back to work or they have some type of earnings during that period of time. So it would be them reporting those earnings so they're not potentially overpaid. Okay. And normally in a regular circumstance, then it comes back to the employer to certify, yes, those were the wages they earned. Is that going to happen or you're just going to go off what the employee puts on their file? Are you speaking in regards to a, a wage audit notice? Like when we uh, ask you to verify this person uh, made this amount? Yes, but it would only be for the two days they were called back. That's a good, Not okay, a we're talk, quarter. Okay, we're, we're, we're talking two different things. What we're speaking about, what I'm speaking about is if they were called back for the, that specific period of time and they are un on, un on unemployment, they would need to report those, report those earnings, and it would be reflected on your quarterly um, uh, notice in regards to how much they earned. Okay. Thank you. Does that answer your question, ma'am? Um, I guess I'm just looking to see if I have to respond weekly also, or you're just going no. to take it off of the quarterly wages. No, you would not have to report that. And, okay. and I'm going to give you my email as well, jsuber, J-S-U-B-E-R, at dew.sc.gov. And 
I'll make sure that we follow up with the conversation. Wonderful. Thank you. And let me give you our number uh, as well again uh, for Kathy Rose or any of our staff that can help you. 803-833-0544. Thank you for the question. Operator, next question. Thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, star one on your touchtone phone. Next question, Tanya Trackenberg, your line is open. Thank you, Congressman, for this opportunity. My question is regarding the uh, PP uh, loan. Uh, is that Does that encompass part-time employees as well or just full-time? Could you clarify on that, please? Great question, Greg. Um, yeah, it, the law does not distinguish between part-time or full-time employees, so you would count part-time and then full-time employees. Great. So it just goes solely on the payroll balance. That's correct. Perfect. Um, and in addition to that, if some employees have sought out unemployment, how do we change that so that they can we can apply them towards this program? Well, it goes back to the double dipping. You can't get uh, pay them for monies which they've been reimbursed for uh, unemployment. So you have to make sure that when you apply that you don't double count the monies that they receive because it will be a duplication of effort and that would be a, um, a misuse of funds. Right. So if they've applied and they haven't been approved yet, we're just going to deny those so that we can put them under this program. Is that correct? That if that's your choice, that is your choice as an employee, an employer. Great. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Tanya. Um, operator, next question. Next question, Leela O'Brien. Your line is open. Yeah. Hello, um, everybody. Thank you so much for this call. A um, couple of quick questions. Um, I just recently opened a business in June uh, of last year, and we had we were hitting our ramp and started to make money in March. Um, so that was in April. I was going to begin to pay myself. I haven't paid myself since June of last year. Um, my first question is, I know that's not going to be in the calculation of the 2.5 times annual monthly earnings, but am I allowed to pay myself um, even though there was no history? And then also um, the forgiveness um, criteria is a little confusing when it says that it's as long as you rehire your people by June 30th, um, you know, if you could maybe go into that a little bit, it's a little confusing. Right. Greg? Are, are you a uh, independent contractor uh, or how are you structured? We are a, actually, we are a C Corp. I own a swim school in Fort Mill, South Carolina, and we are structured as okay. a C Corp. Okay. Uh, the Economic Energy and Disaster Loan is available to you for lost revenue based upon your projected income that you would have received going forward to, uh, and in, in that you can include your salaries. For the payroll protection, it's based upon the previous year's, our most recent uh, payroll. Uh, so it's going to be difficult to do that. You can, uh, you could apply, but I'm, I would, um, uh, that's one you uh, probably need to give me a call about because uh, it's, it's going to be difficult for you to get reimbursed for that because you didn't pay yourself last year as far as income. So that's going to be a difficult reimbursement for you. That's something we may have to talk about and see which one's best for you. Greg, give her okay. give her your number. Sure, actually, this this is Joe with the Small Business Committee. I don't I um, I don't know if Rob, uh, my colleague, might have uh, maybe a little bit uh, more clarity. Rob, do you have anything to add to, to help this 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 constituent? Yeah, the only thing I would add, and I, I agree with uh, Greg on on his uh, response, but I just kind of wanted to give you the background on kind of how we were kind of built this. Um, some of the terms, yes, are, are fairly vague and broad in the legislation and in statute. And the reason for that was to encompass as many small businesses as possible. Kind of moving from that and keeping that in mind, moving towards the definition of payroll, we tried to do the same thing there. Um, so the, the goal was to capture as many costs in that payroll definition as possible so that we can help folks like you. Um, specifically, I, I would suggest um, kind of following up with Greg, and even following up with your lender. Um, were, were questions on eligibility 
uh, questions on what goes into a payroll, we are urging folks to directly with their lender. And the reason we do that, we're suggesting that, is um, we don't want uh, folks to make the calculation on their own and then decide that this doesn't apply and that maybe this applies. We don't want anyone to miss out on um, the, this potential opportunity for them to uh, gain uh, access to cash uh, over the next couple of weeks here. So, um, again, I agree with Greg and, you know, bringing it in and talking with him. And, um, and But I also would like to suggest, you know, talk with your lender. The goal was to capture as much as possible. Um, as a business owner, you know, we understand that uh, you have to uh, – make decisions with your own income, um, and we try to pr build in some flexibility there. But as Greg mentioned, if it's past year and there wasn't any pays go payments going, it might be a little more difficult. So I uh, just kind of wanted to give you the background on kind of what we were thinking about while drafting this. Okay, right. thank you. And if somebody could address the, the rehire language that says if you rehire people by June 30th, you're okay. It's a little confusing. Sure. Who wants to tackle that? Sure. This, this is Joe with, with the, 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 the Small Business Committee again. Um, it, it doesn't have to be the, the same people. It, it's all about headcount. Um, so as long as you maintain a headcount, um, all, all of that will be forgiven over the eight-week period that you're eligible for these, these benefits. So as, as long as you – once you get the loan, you bring your folks back, and all of that will be forgiven over the course of the next eight weeks. Um, even if even if you're not open, uh, that, that's kind of the whole point right. of the program, is that you know as long as you maintain uh, headcount, um, that will be forgiven. Now, uh, if, if you, you're unable to maintain a headcount, say if you if the, the, th the threshold is, is uh, I believe 75 percent. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob. But uh, as long as you maintain that, uh, that that will be forgiven. And then if you if you drop below the 75 percent. Uh, your forgiveness will be reduced by uh, by the, by a factor of, of, that, of that. So uh, the, the more employees you have, the more forgiveness you're going to get. Uh, the fewer employees you have, the less forgiveness you're going to get. But whatever yeah, me, you pay on payroll will be forgiven. Let me let me jump in there. This is Rob. Um, yeah. So there's two qualifiers for the forgiveness section. So um, first, you have to qualify for forgiveness, and that is what Joe is mentioning about maintaining payroll continuity. And what that essentially means is um, making sure that your headcount uh, stays relatively stable. Now, there's flexibility built in there. One, you don't have to make sure that you have to hire um, one specific person that you want to bring back on. The language is actually silent on that, and because we're using uh, payroll documents, it's going to be just headcount and not Social Security, which would dictate um, an individual uh, specifically. The second piece I wanted to bring up is at the beginning of the cover period, for example, maybe you had 10 employees. At the end of the cover period, maybe you have, um, you know, nine employees. There is flexibility built in there so be because we know that uh, for one reason or another, there could be a legitimate firing or someone could pass away. So I wanted to just make sure that folks understand it's not um, exact number from beginning of per covered period to the end. And the second part, that was the first qualifier. So if you maintain payroll continuity, you can move into what is your, the amount of loan forgiveness. And as Joe was mentioning, we're actually going to be looking at the wages and salaries going out the door. So not headcount, but salaries and wages costs going out the door. And that's where if you drop below 25%, you may see a reduction in your forgiveness. If you maintain wages and salary above the 75% mark, um, we fully expect that you should be able to forgive all of that loan that you used on payroll costs, utilities, mortgage, interest, and rent. Great. Let me uh, thank you a lot, Joe and Rob. Let me, uh, we're reaching the eight-minute mark, and what I will do, we've got a hard cutoff time at uh, at 12 o'clock. The reason we tried to get longer, but we just couldn't do it. Everybody's doing this all over the country, but we will be having another one. Let me remind our listeners to get your pen out. In about four minutes, I'm going to have all of our panelists to give their number and their uh, email address uh, so that y'all will have it. But get your pen out so you can write it down. Uh, operator, next question. Thank you. Sharice Turner, your line is open. Okay, thank you. Um, nice to hear from all of you. Um, our issue is that we are a 501c3 church. 
um, nonprofit. And we have tried for the PPP through both of our banks, and one bank said that they weren't doing it, ECCU, and then Bank of America, because we didn't have a credit card, they won't allow us to get it. So we have employees that are literally at home, and there's nothing we can do because we thrive off of tithes and offerings. So what do we do for that? All right, who wants to tackle that? Sure, this is Robin. I'll jump in here and just give some opening remarks. Um, first, really sorry to hear about your situation, and um, we hear you. We're, we're trying to see if we can cover as many uh, businesses as possible. Um, for background, uh, we specifically put into this CARES Act, the, into the PPP program, that uh, 501c3s are eligible. Um, and that encompasses all church. SBA has made the decision to waive all um, extra requirements um, for uh, uh, faith-based organizations. So from that standpoint, um, you are eligible. Um, moving on to kind of where are the lenders in this situation. Um, as Greg mentioned earlier, uh, they are receiving information almost on a daily basis. And while they right now may be saying that they're putting a, a hold maybe on uh, uh, working with um, new customers, we think that will even out and start flowing as they get more information from the SBA and Treasury. So our suggestion is I know it's, it's not good enough, and I know you need them. You guys, the businesses need the money yesterday, but keep on working those processes. Reach out to Greg and his offices. Work with your lender. Things are starting to thaw a little bit, start moving. But we hear you, and we're we're pushing on our end as well as well as best as we can as well for you guys. Thank you so much. And another, another question, if I could, with uh, we're not allowed to do unemployment, so we have a lot of people asking, can they go and get unemployment? So how do what do we do for that? <laughs> Could you please repeat the question? We not we not we don't pay unemployment insurance because we're a nonprofit. So how do we? And we have a lot of employees asking, can they get unemployment? So how do we go about that? Okay, the way that the the bill was was submitted and the act was passed is, you can file for unemployment right now, and obviously in regards to some of the additional flexibilities within the program they may become eligible for unemployment or some of the additional federal programs. Unemployment insurance, filing for regular or state UI, is the beginning of that process. So I would encourage you to go ahead and file. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, let me... Jamie, listen. Um, I'm sorry. I apologize for interrupting, but, Jamie, this is Kathy Rose. Um, you hit upon an excellent point. If you could reiterate that and help people understand the difference between state unemployment and the federal um, unemployment that y'all just received um, the go-ahead on Sunday night, Monday morning. Um, that's the largest question I've been getting is, why haven't I gotten the $600? And it's because, if I am correct, the state didn't even have the <laughs> I walked through it. <laughs> You know, okay. so if you could reiterate that and help people understand that there are two different pots of money, if you will. Okay. Um, let me walk through this. Um, initially, in regards to regular or standard unemployment insurance, the, the weekly, the highest weekly benefit amount that an individual in state of South Carolina can receive is $326. Um, what the federal government has done is they've given us additional funds for everyone on unemployment, an additional $600. So that's the first step. Additional program that has been incorporated is a pandemic unemployment assistance program. And that program was specifically carved out for the gig economy, the self-employed, the 1099, those individuals that normally would not qualify under the unemployment or the state unemployment program. The way this works, though, is individual could exhaust on the standard UI, which is up to 20 weeks, and get an additional 13 weeks, as well as what we've done is waiting on our request to get the additional money to support the 600, but also get additional guidance on how that program is going to work for the self-employed, 
the independent contractors, the gig economy workers, how is that program really going to work? So the unemployment insurance program is not set up for them. Hey, so that's why we're encouraging to go ahead Jamie. and apply for unemployment. You will probably be denied, yeah. but that would allow us to then get this guidance and modify our system so we can pick you up and move you through. Um, we're looking hey, at Jamie. two different pro projects right now, the first being the $600. Hey, Jamie. How are we going to take the money and apply it to everyone who's eligible? And then secondly, how are we going to get this pandemic unemployment assistance program stood up so those individuals can can apply for PUA, which may have been denied for state or regular UI. Hey, Jamie. So Jamie, I'm going to have to... We're looking for a lot of information to be relayed and updated on our website that walk you through the different programs that you may or may not be eligible for. But I just want to I want to echo what Ms. Rose just said. We have just received this guidance, and we're working expeditiously to get this incorporated into our system, and we're working very quickly to get these updates to our website. Y'all, we're out of time. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We'll be doing this again. Again, 803-833-0544. Thank all your listeners, and we will get through this. WRHI Rock Hill. Good Pharmacy, Rock Hill's hometown pharmacy for over 50 years. Camden Avenue at Ebenezer Road. News at noon on South Carolina's eight-time radio station of the year, WRHI FM 100.1 is brought to you by Good Pharmacy, Rock Hill's hometown pharmacy.